And there is a lot of silliness, it would seem to me, going around at the moment. And a fair bit of silliness, I would have to say, paid for by you as a taxpayer and um, uh, walking around raving the flag saying it's responsible journalism. And the silliest thing I've seen for a long time is this Fire and Fury documentary made by, uh, fronted by Paula Penfold, uh, made by Stuff Circuit. Uh, at a cost of up to three hundred thousand uh, dollars from you, the taxpayer, th- from the misnamed Public Interest Journalism Fund, it should be called the Government in- <laughs> the Trough. the Government Interest Propaganda Fund. Should be called PIP. Um, but it has evoked a strong reaction and some debate, and and I think we here on the platform have tried to engage or give right of reply to groups that I think were non-journalistically maligned uh, by stuff and Paula Penfold in the Fire and Fury uh, documentary. And is our mainstream journalist journalism a bit stuffed? Have we really only got one point of view coming across? And is it a tolerant point of view? Well, to discuss all this, I, I, I was looking around for someone who has been a victim of being sort of cancelled or witch hunt Hunted, but someone who can write and has got a brain on their shoulders. And I came up with the envir- lesbian environmentalist gun-toting journalist, Rachel Stewart, who joins us on the line now. Rachel, how are you? Kia ora. <laughs> I love Lesbian, yeah, okay, we'll go with that this morning. All right, well, 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 look, how else could I, I describe you? But, but Rachel, uh, and I follow you on Twitter and stuff, And I get the feeling that you, like me, uh, look at the sort of stuff parading as journalism in the mainstream and literally shake your head in wonder at it. Well, I'm shaking my head. Oh, Rachel, hang on. Now, where are you? Because we're just having a little bit of a communications issue. You're dropping out. Okay, hang on. I will move. How's that? Okay. I will go somewhere where there's no communication issues. Can you hear me? Oh, we can, that's much better, much clearer. Okay. All right. Yes, I don't I don't just shake my head and wonder, Sean, how's that? You hearing me? Yep, gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. I, I'm shaking my head in complete sadness because I think the decline the, the and fall is, we're in the latter part of that statement. We're in the fall start, um, st- uh, part of it. And I think the media is is on the way down, apart from people that are trying to uphold some journalistic uh, integrity like yourself by talking to people that you don't necessarily agree with. And uh, and uh, it's it's pretty dire. And you have to wonder why stuff every day, even this morning, you wake up and there's more vilification of people that don't think like the media or the narrative that they're being told to push. Um, and so it's deeply disturbing and it's deeply traumatising for a lot of people. I'm not one of them, but I can see that uh, people are feeling very upset by some of the things that have been... Yeah. Oh, you just dropped out a little bit again there, Rachel. Keep moving or move to higher ground. <laughs> OK, we got you back. OK. All right. Rachel, All right. but you have been the subject of a kind of call-out witch hunt campaign, haven't you? Yes, oh, yeah, Definitely. I know, I know a fair bit about that. Yeah. Did you feel yeah. like mainstream media were complicit or involved in that campaign against you? Oh, I, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, when my guns were taken off me for a tweet, a joke tweet, and you know all about that, they, you know, uh, wrote all about it. And But when they came back to me after spending thousands of dollars with the lawyer to get them back, they never told the public that they came back and that I won, that I was a fit and proper person to have firearms. So it tells you... The narrative is strong. And what I see with the Fire and Fury, um, for instance, or Andrea Vance's one this morning or Michelle Duff's horrible thing yesterday, is I see, as as an opinion writer for years, I know when people are speaking with passion, you know, this isn't just a narrative they're following. These people literally believe every word they're saying. And that worries me because if they literally believe every word they're saying, they have lost touch with... New Zealanders and people on the ground. And reality. And I can, yeah, and reality, because brainwashing works two ways and conspiracy theories work two ways, Sean, as you know. And I'm starting to think that the people that keep saying everyone's into conspiracy groups and theories because once they may have emailed Voices for Freedom or something and they discovered that or they went on Facebook and said something they didn't like, 
That's, that's, they're getting into the very thing that they're criticising everybody about. Yeah, and that is the amazing thing. Is, yes. And it frustrates the hell out of me, to be honest. Kate Hanna, this woman who apparently is the founder of the Disinformation Project, and yeah. accuses Voices for Freedom and Counterspin about being echo chambers. I have been trying for months to get her onto the platform for a live interview. Yeah. And she will not you engage. No, she will not. Because, because Sean, you have been vilified too. You are a caricature. Am you I? The woke, the, yeah, oh yes, oh yes. I mean, it's, ama it's even amazing I'm talking to you now because four or five years ago I would never have dreamed that I'd be talking to you because the wokies that, you know, were telling everybody that you were, you know, you were, you were devil incarnate. And of course, when you're in that little bubble, which they're all in, the yeah. woke are all in the bubble, um, you believe it. And I would have thought the chances of me talking to Sean Punkett would be less than zero. And here we are today because I respect the fact that you've done what you've done and you, you listen to other opinions, even if you call people crazy like that woman this morning about the Pfizer documents, but that's all right. Um, <laughs> you know, but you still, but at least you're engaging and that's the thing. This is what free speech is about. We engage, we talk, you know, we, when we lose that, we're stuffed. All right. Tell us about the Michelle Duff column and stuff yesterday that you, you were so scathing about online. Well, I don't believe it was true. I don't believe that she... She made up a story, didn't she? And fundamentally yeah. it was yeah. about a friend of hers whose husband fell down the Trump or the yeah. conspiracy yeah. rabbit hole. Yeah. Yeah, it was made up. I mean, it was. I've been around long enough and you have too, Sean, and so have a lot of other journalists going, that was a made up interviewing your typewriter story. She, There may have been a grain of truth in there and it, and it really felt... To me, like she interviewed a typewriter, that's all. And basically, the woman, her husband started, you know, believing in QAnon, and you know, um, all of a sudden, Barack Obama's wife Michelle has a penis under that dress, and oh my God, I mean, it was unbelievable. But they were the sort of things that she made up in her head because these are the sort of things that she thinks people are out there saying. Possibly yeah. some people are, but most people aren't. And so you start to think to yourself, what is going on? Where they're trying to turn us into America? Where if we're not with them, we are right-wing conspiracists. Mm. And this is taxpayer-funded, isn't it? Clearly. Yeah. Real problem. Because, and you know, if journalists are sitting around thinking and feeling cosy and, you know, down at stuff, which is the main protagonist here, but we have it in the newsroom with Spin Mark Golders, carry-ons, and yeah, all of them. If they're sitting around here thinking that we... Uh, respect them or care about them, they're wrong. We don't respect them. In fact, if you keep lying to people or keep spinning, you know, your own little belief systems on the populace, we'll just give up on you and not believe a word you say. And that's, that's where the media is really in danger right now. Mm. Just because yeah. they're bad, though, and I think they are bad, I'll, I'll be honest, in a personal sense, mm. they offend me because journalism and broadcasting are my vocation and have been for my entire life. And I feel they cheapen and bastardise what I have uh, dedicated my professional life uh, to. Um, yes. But it doesn't mean they're always wrong. And I look at an outfit like Counterspin. I look at people like Kelvin Alp. I don't like them. Mm -hmm. I think they're disgusting. I look at a lot of anti-vax views and a lot of the logic used by people who are... Mm -hmm. Um, telling me to read the Pfizer documents, and they're wrong too. It's not black and white, is it, Rachel? No. And, I mean, the woman with the Pfizer documents this morning, I mean, I think probably research is all good, and we all know that Pfizer's the most sued company in the in Yeah, the but, 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 but that's world. complete false but, yeah, logic but, 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 you've but, just but, come with there. So what? Does that mean that they can't make a vaccine? And they're not no, the most sued company no. in the world. It isn't the largest... Um, it's just a catch cry for ignorance, Rachel. See, we can argue no, even no. now. Well, can you let me finish and then I will tell you. <laughs> yes. So, yes. Yes. So, yes, they all say that, yes. But I guess I'm a healthy sceptic. I think yeah. that, you know, journalism should be about that. And that actually, where are the, where are the articles? I mean, I don't necessarily agree with what, you, what these people are saying either. Sometimes mm. I do, sometimes I don't. But we should be looking at all of those things. Where are the articles on the vaccine injured? Now, you say that you don't think there's many people injured. I know people that are injured. My hairdresser's injured. She's got myocarditis, 35, fit as a buck rat, suddenly she's down. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they're around. There are good stories out there about those things. We would have more faith in the media if they started to look at other sides 
and mm. other things. And, and more and more, they will be pressed to do that because more and more these things are going to show up and they're going to be left wanting, you know. But why do they need to change what they're doing if the government is basically taking money off the taxpayer and giving it to them to make propaganda for them? Because it causes division. I'll just... Oh, it causes division that we don't need. It was only... I think I, talk, I speak for a lot of people when I say people that got vaccinated and people who didn't. Mm. People who agree with me, people who didn't. I think that we're all just wanting to move on and have a little bit of a break from all of this bullshit. Mm. And every day we are called in to believe that there is a big right-wing conspiracy in this country, when actually I'd argue that there's a left-wing conspiracy more likely. But um, because when you give money to journalists and media outlets, you've got to ask yourself what the government is doing. It's not a good look. I mean, the moment that I really got it, what really resonated for me was when I saw Trevor Mallard standing on the balcony, looking over mm. at the people down below, the peasants, the peasants, and he looked like um, with his arms folded and he looked like uh, Mussolini, you know, and there was, there was the press, I mean, New Zealand's finest media, standing the Christian next Hall. To him. Yeah. Yeah. Standing next to him and I thought, why aren't people... Um, looking at this and seeing an historic moment, which is that the media now is part of the, uh, it's part of it's it's part of mainstream everything, and it's it's looking after the elites, I guess, if you want to yeah, call yeah. it Rachel, that. Rachel, I, I, I think, and I went down there for a press conference the other day. They weren't individually bad people or bad journalists, but I think people inside, if you like, Parliament convinced themselves that that crowd on the lawn were going to storm the parliament and kill them all. I, I think agree. They, I think they were operating at a level of paranoia yes. that was incredibly heightened and they've never got past it and they never saw, because they never really interacted with it or went That's down right. and talked to the protesters, they never understood how chaotic and unorganised, disorganised things were at the protest. And while there were some extreme groups there or groups that had agendas, no one could get hold of that protest. Uh, they couldn't organise a, a, a piss up in a brewery with that protest. But I tell you what, the people like that you mentioned, like Mark Dalder and, and Trevor Mallard, and even quite reasonably MPs and stuff, they were convinced that their lives were at risk because yeah, they um, had been reading the paranoid copy that the journalists had been yep. writing. That's right. And here we are. Uh, and here we are months later and the journalists still feel traumatised and actually revengeful. Yeah. Uh, they feel vengeful. They, they, this is revenge for, you know, gosh, you know, you were mean to us journalists. We are, you know, we're pretty special, you know. Mm. There is a bit of that running through it. Um, you know, and the thing is that, I'll give you an example. I used to write about dairy farming a lot. People know that. I've, I've got a background in dairy, but a background yeah. in farming. I felt that the rivers were being polluted and, you know, and, mm. and I still do believe that we've yep. got a problem there. But I stopped. I stopped. One was because the New Zealand Herald put pressure on me to do that. Um, and so I didn't like that. But, you know... Uh, They're coming, coming for your guns. Herald. Is that them coming for your guns in the background? <laughs> Actually, you might be right. Anyway, I've got to duck in and lock the cabinet. No, I'm <laughs> joking. But um, I stopped because I knew that I was traumatising farmers, actually, yeah. in my own way. Now, the word is a very powerful thing, and we're all caught up in this horrible, spinny time where everyone's abusing everybody else, mm. and everything's upside down and back to front. And I could see that farmers were suddenly my tribe of, that I'd been criticising for a long time, not mm. so much them, but Fonterra and the next levels up. Mm. I could see them getting distressed. And this is no different. This is what's happening with the media here is they're complicit in distressing the populace. And I think we're re being re-traumatised by stuff at the moment with these endless everyday stories. The one this morning is a bunch of people who are standing for, you know, council and they've got like eight mug shots or something. These people have got links to conspiracy groups. Well, first of all, what are these links that they talk about? Is that a Facebook post yeah. and, or an email? And second of all, what do you call a conspiracy group? Yeah, I mean, you know? the Green Party could be a conspiracy group. They think the world's going to explode, right? And Tory Farmer, yeah, who's, like a, who's, a, who's a, uh, you know, uh, a candidate for mayoralty, so she's got links to a conspiracy group, right? That's uh, right. Yeah, and, and it is absolutely partisan politicking yep. by what should be an impartial news media, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, one thing if these were opinions, in fact, I'd argue they are, but th th these aren't opinions. That doco, Fire and Fury, to mm. give them no right of reply is 
patently journalistically wrong, and they probably deserve to be um, taken to the cleaners for it. Yeah. You, yeah. Can't, you can't say, oh, well, we don't want to give them a platform and then vilify them with no voice. I mean, I know all about that because that's what happened to me. Yeah. So, you know, I'm particularly sensitive about that stuff. Um, but watching what they're doing, it just doesn't feel good. Yeah, I agree with you, Rachel. Rachel, we must talk more. I thank you for your uh, time this morning, and I'm glad that wasn't the police coming for your guns again. Uh, that siren in the background. Have a fantastic day. That is uh, Rachel Stewart, former uh, columnist, farmer, hunter, gun owner, environmentalist, many things, and I think a voice of reason in, 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 in difficult times.